Hey everyone, welcome to The Level Up Life, where my brother and I interview individuals who have overcome major obstacles or made major transitions in their lives to now lead a comfortable life. Today, we are meeting with Jalen Holmes. Not only does he work at one of the most sought after companies in the US, Salesforce, he also has his own business where he sells commercial real estate and that he's built over the past few years. So today, we're gonna learn how potentially you could do something similar. Jalen, great having you on. No, thanks for having me. What's up, man? Really nice to meet you. Um, excited to talk about this. I think maybe what we should address the elephant in the room first, though. Gavin, we, we have the same shirt on today. I it's Blue Friday. What can I say? The lights are also blue. I mean, we're just we're just trying to be good hawks, you know. And for all the 49er fans out there, well, that's just you know, it's your own problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jalen, let's let's get into it a little bit. So, um, tell us first, what are you working on right now? Describe us your current role at, at Salesforce and what some of the things you're responsible for. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, currently within Salesforce, I sell the data software Tableau. Um, my whole job is to help healthcare organizations um, see and understand data. But this next piece of it, this next wave of analytics is artificial intelligence, the AI. Um, really making intelligent, smart decisions based on data um, is something that we're seeing as a, re a really big addressable market uh, within the software space. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're hearing about AI everywhere right now, right? Like, it just seems like it's the future. I guess we're going to be going. So that's got to be so cool working on something that is so a part of the future. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting. It's a part of every conversation. It's a part of everything we do. Um, GPT, right? Chat GPT started the next wave of what I believe is the, the dot com of the world. And so to be a part of what I'm going to call the data fam, which is what we identify ourselves as, is, is really fun. The, the data is fun. Um, and in my free time of what I like to consider myself as a business person, really focusing in on real estate investments, um, residential selling. And so really taking a lot of what I'm learning from the, cur the, the corporate space and applying that to my entrepreneurial life as well. Yeah, that's a great segue. So uh, Jalen, tell us like what what you currently do in real estate. Um, would love to hear also like what inspired you to, to look into real estate. Yeah, um, I guess just like a quick 15 second history on who I am, right? Uh, Michigan boy, uh, Whirlpool Corporation is, is headquartered out of there. And so I spent a lot of time in the kitchen space. I sold appliances to retailers, uh, found myself that I found a love for appliances. So let's, I'll, I guess I'll start there. And quickly turned into love for the home. And so during COVID uh, in 2021, at the height of COVID, I decided to go for my real estate license, uh, really dive into it full full head on. And and since then, I've been able to generate a lot of different revenue for myself and to, I think, what this podcast is all about, right? Leveling up life uh, and, and building a comfortable situation for myself and my partner. And so it's it's been really exciting to be a part of. Tell us a little bit, what, what is it that prompted that, that change? I mean, obviously COVID prompted a, a lot of changes and you know, with a lot of different people, but. Yeah. Like I stopped going to the gym, right? That's a big change. Right. So <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what were you doing? Like what, what, what came into Jalen's mind? Yeah, I think one, I think a big piece of, of who I am is relationships and the people I surround myself with. Um, and that just being. The, the friend group I have is very, I'd say, forward thinking, business oriented. You know, how do we do better for ourselves and for our future families? Um, and so we've really gotten into this notion of general wealth, uh, generational wealth. And that spurred, I guess it re reignited the, the need and want to generate additional sources of income, which is what real estate investing or in this case just residential sales is is providing um and so i had a little a little nudge from my mom a, a nudge from personal friends back home that also got their license during that time and so it, it was more of a why can't i do this at the same time um I, i'm not married just yet i don't have children and so why why can't i utilize this time that i have that's available 
and really do something valuable with it. Um, and since then, uh, almost rolling up on two years now, we've been able to do some really cool things. Um, relieve some, some debt that was holding me down a little bit. I've purchased a home. Um, so there's like some yeah. really, really exciting things that's happening with like what, you know, you can do with a, a side business, so to speak. I love that. I love that. It, it, you know, especially in t- like today's world, you find that there are so many people who either got laid off or maybe just, you know, cost of living has gone up so much that they need to find additional avenues of revenue. And I, I'm not sure like that many people might think like, am I capable enough to, you know, not only have a side business, but do something that's going to be directly building relationships with people in an un- in front manner. Like you're going to see these people, they're going to see you, they're going to get to know you, they have to like you. Like there's so many different aspects to that. Like when you're looking at how you got the real estate license, like w- what was the process like? Was it pretty straightforward? Were you able to get it pretty quick? Like what, what was that look like? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm, fundamentally, I truly believe that you can learn whatever it is that you put your mind to. Like, that's there just not something we tell kids, right? Um, truthfully, uh, I think four-year college institutions is a hack to the government system, right? You just, I don't I don't need a, a, a four-year degree to tell me how to sell real estate. But I will say it has provided me with a lot of opportunities, like working at Salesforce, to learn the fundamental aspects of business that have translated into how I run my business for my real estate uh, clients, for an example. So realistically, I took an online class. I didn't go in person. It it probably took me a little longer than I, I would have liked to. I played a little too much Call of Duty in between my study breaks. But of course, um, of course, I, I'd say it probably took two, three months to like solidly study for the license. And then you take an exam. You pass the exam and boom, before you know it, you, you're a licensed professional. Um, so, and it's very low cost to barrier to enter, right? Yeah. That, that's the really, that's the really cool part is the barrier to entry is so low um, that if you're willing to put the time and investment into it, the, the projection, the outcome is so much far greater, yeah. right? And so for me initially was, I know I'm going to buy a house soon. The return on investment's already there once I buy my house. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to broker the deal myself. And then everything I do on top of that is just added value. Oh. Wow. So you were able to cut out like some added fees in buying the house by you yourself being being a real estate agent. That's amazing. So you even just with that transaction alone, you made you got a lot of value out of that license. The the license paid for itself over the course of the two years in one transaction. So um, it it's it's fun, right? I think when you get into the mindset of like what you want to do on the side, uh, it, it has to be something you love, in my opinion, uh, because then it just becomes additional work. And so what I've found in clients that I've been able to uh, to help out and finding their home uh it's joy. It's like, it's happiness. There's nothing like handing over the keys to somebody to their home that they've worked so hard for and them saying thank you and smiling. And, and you're like, this is yours. Like you oh. did it. It's an important life moment, right? Like they, you say like one of the stri- most stressful moments in your life is like moving, but I would think one of the most happiest moments of your life is when you get your first or maybe your forever home, right? Oh, 1000%. I, I never knew how it felt until I had to do it myself, had to go through it myself. But I mean, it's truthful. There's nothing like going home. I mean, there's yeah. nothing like making people happy. Um, and not that I don't get to do that in my corporate life, but man, do I get to do that in my real estate life? Oh yeah. That's so then, awesome. So like speaking of your clients too, I think, so it, it makes sense, right? Like the, the test isn't like altogether too difficult. Like you, you, sh- you know, people can do it and there's some just justify justification in being able to do that to if you were to buy your own home and saving all that money. But I think the, the thing that people are going to wonder about is going to be how do you building your book of biz- business? Like how are you finding these folks or how are you finding these homes to sell? Like what, what's your process for making this a successful business? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, it does take time, right? And I think this is 
part of the fundamentals that I've gotten from just being a sales professional. Uh, there is, there's, there's footwork to be done in terms of prospecting, lead generation, so on and so forth. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. A lot of successful agents typically don't have to pay for leads, right? Um, it's, it's, it's a very, what I consider a re- relational type business. Um, and so for me, being a transplant, it, it has been a little bit more difficult because I don't have that community. But I think in hindsight, I do have a really big community and that's yeah. my Salesforce ecosystem and all the people I get to leverage uh, within yeah. my day-to-day life, right? Um, so you you hear a sphere of influence quite a bit when, in the real estate world is how do you get intact with your sphere and then spider web out from there? Oh, that's so great. So finding like a commonality and you happen to have a commonality with tens of thousands of people, right? Like someone's someone's more likely to approach or work with somebody that they know or like have something in common with, generally speaking. So for you to be able to leverage um, your you know, career that you currently have to support your entrepreneurial efforts, I think that that's awesome. People might not actually think about that, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, it's, it's Salesforce has in, in a way supported this thought and this journey that I'm going on, right? Um, and we'll continue to do so because I, I don't have any immediate plans to retire Salesforce in my career. I think I'm really excited about the direction and where the company's headed. But man, like who knows what I what this could evolve into is kind of my thought process as well, right? So there's I think as kids we all dream about owning our own thing. I don't I didn't wake up saying, hey, I want to go work for someone for the rest of my life. Um, and then this is just the the business or forward thinking side of me is well, retirement is looking further and further away as life gets more and more expensive. So how do I? How do I get there faster or make more money to set up future family and myself to, to be able to do different things? And so there's a lot of thoughts that go into like how this whole thing fits together. And it's a little bit of sacrifice now to have it, to have more later. Have you found it difficult at all to balance the, the workload of the nine to five with the workload of starting and growing your business? Um, yeah, I, I mean, yes and no. I think it, it's it's as much as you want to put into it as as you want, right? Like, I myself want to be a successful person just in general. And so the, the, the stress that I put on myself uh, and the expectations that I put on myself will be different from a, another person. Um, when it comes to what I'm supposed to deliver on my quota to Salesforce, you better bet that I'm going to get there. My goal is to exceed it. Um, but there's no way in heck I'm going to let what has been fruitful to me as well in a side business just fail because without, without the inputs, right. in sales, you, you have to have the inputs. I went to a real estate conference at the beginning of the year and Really, the the big key takeaway that I that I took away, and this could apply to anybody within the sales professional business, is you got to live in the top of the funnel, right? Uh, if you continue to do the work, like your leads, your opportunities, they will continue to work their way down, and they will can they will pay out. But if you don't live in the top of the funnel, your leads are going to dry up. And yeah. in the real estate world, if you don't do that, you won't have any buyers or sellers to to present a proposal to to. Uh, go show a house, right? And you don't know when your next paycheck is coming. So how do I continue to feed that that funnel it is, is kind of my priority and thought process. And I guess I, I've gone a whole roundabout way of uh, answering your question on how do I manage my stress? It's all priority based, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a strong prioritization. I learned this from a mentor of mine um, at Whirlpool. There's always a way to make it happen. I live by that phrase. There's always a way to make it happen. And so if it's really important to me, to someone else, you'll, you'll find a way. That's, That's a great awesome. way to look at it. I, I love that phrase. I love the fact that you have all this passion for 
you know, what some might consider a side gig, and I think you really consider more of like a, a, a valuable business that can be a part of your career for the long term. Have you thought about like, let's say 10 years from now, like you made your, you made your great money with working for a great company and things, but things are really starting to take off in the real estate side. Is there an, a, a thought process of like, you know, I'd love to switch to this full time or is it, or would you always be working side, like have additional side gigs? Yeah, no, I think uh, I think the goal would be to eventually separate, right? I think if I can foster this business and to becoming something that consumes me is what I'm going to say. If it's starting to pull me away, and what what is that definition of pulling me away from my corporate job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say, well, one, the opportunity cost of well, am I going to get paid on this deal more than I'm going to get paid on closing a deal? Like Salesforce is one of those <laughs> logical answers, right? Where am I making the most money? Um, but also, I, this I think happiness plays a, a really big factor into this too. So um, my partner, she works in um, financial investing. And so she has that flexibility uh, to to do what she pleases with her schedule. And I think that all comes down into play of like, okay, what do, what do we want our life to look like later? Uh, when, yeah. when children comes into play, um, games, travel, like all these different, like cool things where I can control me a little bit better in real estate than I can at corporate. True. Um, and so I think that, that is a, that is a big piece to it. Um, the autonomy, of course, the dollars that that will come with the success. Is there is there a, a five to ten year plan on it? No, because I think life has an interesting way of throwing curveballs at us every day. Um, yeah. But I think it will have an interesting way of telling me when it is time. So it's on you know it's on your mind. Not a not a concrete plan right now to do it, but definitely uh, taking up some some space in the brain. Um, it's taking some space up, right? Well, I'd be, I feel like I'd be a little um, remiss to say the market right now is probably not the best time for me to do it. Um, sure. But, but it, it's not out of the picture, right? It, I don't think it's, it's never out of the picture. Um, again, it's, it's knowledge I love to have though. It's conversations that's so much fun to have with people that are even thinking about it. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned it earlier. I think alone, like if you're, all, if you're looking for a home right now in this difficult market, it could actually be a great idea to look at getting your own retail license because that could end up saving you additional money, depending on like obviously where you live, like some areas it's going to be a lot higher, other areas can be lower, but that could in and itself be a way to kind of save on those upfront costs. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, from my perspective, it was probably... A couple thousand dollars to get invested into like yourself you're investing in yourself let's not just think about the license right you're investing in yourself you're investing in knowledge that's going to pay you out in dividends not just from like a a transactional standpoint but let's take it a deeper uh, a layer deeper in terms of what you're actually learning about the home buying process as being a first-time home buyer yeah um it's it's funny because taylor my partner um, she had a ton of questions, right? And, you know, I'm thinking I'm a professional. I can do this. I have the relationships on the financing side. I know how the process works from the, the industry side. This is going to be smooth. I was wrong. I mean, yeah. she still had so many more questions that she had going through this whole thing. And so it's a stressful process for anybody that's never bought a house and the amount of knowledge that you're going to gain just from studying uh, a real estate exam initially and the connections you're going to make from a lender broker standpoint, uh, the return on investment is so far beyond just the initial dollars that you're going to save. So Jalen, let's, uh, let's think here a little bit about, someone who might be in similar shoes. Maybe they, they work a nine to five, they have some passion for for real estate, they're thinking about this. Um, what are some uh, 
some tips or advice you would give to someone kind of in, in those shoes? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, something that I've always claimed myself to be pretty, pretty good at is networking. Um, I am not afraid of being the dumbest guy in the room. I think that's totally okay. You're willing to learn. You're willing to grow and develop. Uh, yeah. I think that's, I think that's what makes the most successful people successful just because they never stop learning. Um, and we all learn in different ways. I just want to be very clear. I am not a reader. I am an audio person, a visual person. And so there you go. there's a lot Thank of, you. there's lots of different, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, but if you're, if someone's interested, like, I might be an entrepreneur in terms of getting in, getting really invested into residential selling. Um, maybe it's commercial selling at some point. Maybe it's even real estate investment. Um, you gotta, you gotta strike up conversation with experts within that industry or within a specialty that you're looking to go into and just ask questions, be curious. That's part of, again, the, the corporate experience that I've gotten as being a salesperson for, for Salesforce. We have to be curious as salespeople to ask questions and dwell into the the need behind the need is what we will call it. Right. Um, if you don't really understand the basic the basis of what they're trying to accomplish, then you can't be successful. Um, and so that would be my advice: is don't be afraid to ask. Um, we we all there's there's not a successful person that hasn't leveraged someone else. I'd be surprised if there was. Oh, that's yeah. great advice. Oh yeah, I, I I totally agree with you on that perspective too. I, an old saying that I would have uh, when I was managing was the lone wolf dies, but the pack thrives. Right? Like there's no one singular person that's able to accomplish something. It's usually almost sometimes even done by a village. Right? Like a lot of people coming together. So w- with that perspective in mind, Jalen, like I'm curious, like what what are things that you think, or like maybe things that you learned from? that other people could like learn from. So like any mistakes or maybe things that like, Oh, I wouldn't do this if I were you, because I learned it. And you know, this, this is what was going on with me. Yeah. Um, getting started off in this journey. Um, <laughs> I think when you become an entrepreneur, there's kind of a lot of things from a business side that you have to learn. Right. And that's, that's, the marketing, that's the back end operations, that's the the reporting revenue to the IRS and paying taxes and all that good stuff. Um in in the real estate world, since it's so autonomy based, right? You you hang your license with a brokerage and then they say, All right, Jalen, we have error and emission insurance on you. Like you mess up, we got your back, type of thing. Um what I would say is it is really important to know who you're doing business with. And by that, I mean the brokerage that you, that you sign up for is like very integral to the process and development of, of being a real estate agent. Um, I will shamelessly drop a a dime for Keller Williams. I think they have one of the best brokerages out there for getting new reps up and going because of the amount of resources, um, enablement, um, and support that they give. It's it's a true community. Uh, you can go to a lot of other brokerages out there that have 0% commissions, right, in terms of what they would take from your paycheck. But the amount of resources and support you're going to get from a community standpoint are going to be bar none. And so I, I, I feel like this is my sales pitch on go, go, some, go somewhere where you are going to be supported because it's a, it's a tough business. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. Um, and you need to have that mentor relationship with someone, um, that can, that can steer you in the right direction. Um, otherwise it's easy to get lost. I'm really curious, like what, who were the mentors, uh, in your career thus far? And like, what, what did they do for you that, that really helped to continually improve yourself? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I think, Having a mentor mentor relationship is, is really interesting, right? Uh, from what I've learned in my corporate life is, uh, these types of relationship are solely mentee driven, right? Um, you want to come to the meeting prepared with questions, curiosity, 
uh, be able to leverage this person's wisdom to, to continue driving yourself forward. Um, in, in my real estate world, I've taken that page out of that book and basically copy and pasted it. Right. I, I, be, I found a person that is a high producer. Um, and within this world, you can be an individual contributor as I am at Salesforce, or you can be a part of a team. Um, you can think of that as just like being a part of an enterprise team. Um, she's an individual contributor. I found her as a, a mentor and said, Hey, uh, let me offer my services to you. Right. I'm hungry. I want to go after the business. Uh, you need doors open. You need me to do paperwork. Um, uh, how can I, uh, partner with you in order to help you drive business? And then it also, you know, eventually pay out for me as well. And so when you have that level of guidance and mentor mentee relationship, the, the strides that you can take are, are endless, right? I, I, I will contribute a lot of, a lot of gratitude, uh, to this person on the success I've been able to achieve. And we found That's that excellent. to be like, and we found that to be a common theme as well. Like mentorship has been so key uh, to leveling up your life is of finding people that care about you that are willing to share that knowledge. Um, uh, when I, and I, you know, I think you bring up a really good point, Jalen, like you, you can't just ask someone to be your mentor, right? You can't just go up to someone and be like, Hey, you're successful. I'd love to leech off you from a little bit just so I can be successful. That's not how it works you need to offer them something valuable or something that maybe they don't want to do. That's part of what they need to do and get buy-in. Like you need to get that person to buy into you and the way of doing that and how our society works is kind of like a give take. If I give you something, you'll give me something in return. Most likely some people suck, but you know what I mean? Right? So I love that takeaway. Absolutely. That's, that's nail on the head right there. So Jalen, one of the things you had mentioned was support and having a supportive network is really helpful in supporting your efforts as an entrepreneur and also within your own career. What, what supportive network, you know, did you have personally and how did they help you? Yeah, I, I think that is a piece that goes underappreciated. Um, the amount of support that you can get for doing something like this. Um, it takes a what I'm going to call alignment between you and your partner. Should you be in a relationship? Um, it takes a lot of support from, you know, your loved ones, friends, because this business is, it can be slow at times, right? Um, with most agents probably don't make a sell within the first six months. That's discouraging. Um, a lot of agents drop out. I, I want to say the rough st statistic is about 80% of new agents drop out of the real estate business within two years. Wow. So Dang. it's not a very, what I'm going to say, like it can be a very fruitful business, but without the level of support necessary to like, just keep going. So there's a lot of persistence that's required to do this, right? It, there's, a, there's a lot of grit um, that it takes to be successful in this business. And so when you get kicked down, the people you have to pick you back up and telling you you're doing the right thing is, is so it, there's no price tag on it. You, you can't weigh how that makes you feel. It, that makes me think about a lot of things about life and just how, how, cause I've, uh, I've had a lot of entrepreneurial pursuits and had a lot of low moments when like either struggling to find a, a gig or, or, or whatnot and i can definitely attest to that too or just like that's the support of people around you because it's so easy to doubt question i mean you just mentioned a crazy statistic of 80 percent leave after two years i mean those people are obviously feeling doubt and feeling feeling like they're not going to make it um so maybe could you speak to that just a little more like what what are the types of things you have to tell yourself when when you're experiencing that doubt yeah, I think for me, it's it's super interesting. I think this is the the really awesome value I have in the support of Salesforce right now, right? This is this is the fun part for me it's because I can outlast. Like, I know I have the stamina, right? Oh, yeah. Let's just call, let's, let's just call it that, right? Um, I've got the support, and I'm going to continue to drive my success, as I mentioned earlier, from a corporate standpoint that can 
allow me to outlast the the low times of my real estate business um yeah now when it, when it does come to that like you know okay well Jalen, like what do you do how, what do you do differently and that's the question i get to that's the fun question as just a problem resolution person that i get to try and solve for so that's the creative part that comes out like i get to go to my local gym down the street and say hey what marketing events can i can i host here um do i go do open houses on the weekend I, I have nothing going on this weekend uh taylor's out well let's go let's go do something let's go be busy uh productive busy and so um when when things are slow for me yeah it sucks i would i would love to have the extra cash so i can go do some awesome things for people that i love um and that's what it's all rooted in it's all rooted in people i do things for people that i love um and maybe that's that's the why right like let's just narrow this all the way back down to the why because that's where it comes from um it as much as it is for me wanting to be successful on my own it's it's the why behind who i'm doing it for that drives everything oh, man dude i gotta say dude you're you're a you're a very inspiring individual like we've had the opportunity to call with a, like you know meet with a lot of different people but i just you're oozing with like just you know the confidence and the passion and like i can really sense it in you and i know you know there's a part of it that comes from being in sales as a career and I, I think for anyone who really wants to be good at networking or get to know people better, you should try a sales gig, even if it's door to door, like just get in there and it'll be like those skills will be so transferable. Uh, but more importantly, like I would say like your ability, like pick yourself up, be like, you know what? No, let's keep going. That's Stanima you mentioned. I think it's, I just think it's impressive. And I, I really think that for our listeners out there, that that's really what it's going to take. If you want to do this, you got to be serious about it. Um, you got to communicate with and have a great supportive network and really just make sure that you have a good why. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I didn't have my why, you know, then there, there'd be nowhere where I'm going, right? There's, there's a compass, there's a North star for me and there's no way I'm letting the people that I love down. It's kind of the way that I look at it. So, um, oh yeah, we're, we're going to keep going. Good. That's awesome. Jalen, thank you. And anyone out there, if you're thinking about going into real estate and incorporating that into your life while balancing a nine to five, take a page out of Jalen's book. He's been able to manage both successfully. I've learned a lot uh, from this conversation. So thank you very much. Please feel free to uh, like, subscribe, share this video if you thought of somebody who uh, might think it's cool. Yeah. And don't forget, if you have any questions for Jalen, we'd be happy to do those in follow up. Uh, Jalen's a pretty cool guy. So uh, most likely he'll give you a pretty real answer. Yeah, I appreciate the time, guys. Thanks for allowing me to uh, share my story. I think it's, uh, it's cool. Maybe not unique, but uh, hopefully it can inspire someone out there to just jump in. So uh, thanks for thanks for having me.